Hi there. This is Chatroom 14, your bonus episode on Scrolls and Leaves. I'm Guy 3 Vaidinathan. In this episode, you'll be traveling with hip hop around the world, from LA to the streets of Karachi. This episode is produced by students at Yale University who are interning with us. And I have a small request. If you like what you're hearing, why not consider donating? Details on our website, scrollsandleaves.com slash support. सच बात कहूँ सस्ते में मिलता है स्ट्रीट बिरयानी कराची में चलता है कराची में चलता है अस्सलाम वालेकुम खवातीनो हजरत गूगल में मेरा नाम अदनान बलोच है माय नेम इज अदनान बलोच एंड आई एम फ्रॉम अ रूरल एरिया इन मलीर द सॉन्ग यू हर्ड इज बाय अदनान अदनान इज अ 24 ईयर ओल्ड पाकिस्तानी रैपर and unlike most other rappers who hail from a neighborhood in Karachi called Leari which is also known as Karachi's ghetto Adnan is from a quiet sleepy town surrounded by farmlands to the north of the city I rap in Balochi to highlight my culture if there is a social issue plaguing the community I rap about that this is what trap is it highlights communal problems for example I have a new track in Urdu about drugs I want people to pay attention to this. The boom in drug usage is a problem that affects everyone. Assalamu alaikum khawatin o hazrat Google map se kiye kuch place land bar ghar se nikle Rap is a musical genre that is part of hip hop. Hip hop if you don't know start as a street culture and includes rapping DJing break dancing and graffiti In the early 1970s in the South Bronx in New York City people were facing tough living conditions and harsh policing tactics In 1973 16-year old Clive Campbell threw a dance party in the rec room of the apartment building he was living in and he used two turntables to elongate the breaks in funk records by artists like James Brown and a new musical style was born Campbell was soon known around the Bronx as DJ Cool Herc and together with Africa Bambara and Grandmaster Flash he seen as a pioneer of hip hop. Young people would hook up their speakers to stadium lights and play records on turntables. They'd scratch and sample. They dance and reclaim public spaces that were being increasingly policed and restricted. So, how did this music get from the Bronx to the streets of Karachi 8000 miles away? Find out in today's chat room from LA to Karachi, the rise of Desi hip hop. I'm Iman Iftikhar and I'm Alexa Stanger. Today we'll be speaking with Adnan and to a pioneer of Desi hip hop. Stay with us till the end to hear some live rap from Adnan. This episode is based on the book Hip Hop Desis: South Asian Americans, Blackness and a Global Race Consciousness. by Natasha Sharma at Northwestern University in Chicago. The music featured in this episode is from Adnan Balok and Ruckus Avenue. So, what gives hip hop a desi flavor? I think it's this interpretation of the culture giving your own spin on it from either a story perspective or giving it something unique from a music perspective is really what I think we have to give to this hip hop genre. I'm hearing music nowadays that's spiritual hip hop that incorporates principles of yoga and meditation into hip hop. You may say that this could be somewhat of a secondary or even an advanced interpretation of Indian culture making its way into it. That's Sami Chand. He's one of the pioneers of Desi hip hop. A record producer, rapper, and founder of Ruckus Avenue, a Los Angeles-based independent label that supports emerging Desi artists. The mission of Ruckus Avenue is to create music that's a mix of Eastern and Western cultures. It represents artists like Siva Kanisvaran, Ruby Ibarra, and Satinder Sartaj. When people think of Desi hip hop, At least some will think of Sami. When I started doing this, I was probably the first Indian kid maybe around the world rapping like this. In the late 1990s, Sami Chand was in high school and he and his Desi friends were all listening to hip hop. So they wondered, what can we do with this sound? How can we take this medium, this music and combine it with our experiences to make it our own? In his 20s, Sami and three of his South Asian friends formed the first Desi rap group in America. It's called Karmacy. 
At the time, uh, when we were rapping, especially from the South Asian community perspective, there were very few of us doing it nationwide. In fact, I can probably count all of us on one hand at that moment. Although at the time there wasn't a scene for it, we were each of us doing things in our own individual space, particularly amongst the mainstream hip hop community. And in doing so, we felt that we were not articulating a voice of an immigrant experience or even a second generational experience. We weren't really talking about our own community condition, what was going on, the politics, the news, the information, the perspectives. And so the four of us at the time when we started kind of doing our thing as a group, it was more so because there was a void. There was no voice in this space and we wanted to go kind of adopt it. Natasha Sharma writes that Asian Americans in hip hop have been mostly invisible. This is sort of like how Desi folks are seen, or rather, I should say, unseen in America. They're there, but invisible. The so-called model minority. They don't really fit into the black-white conceptions of race. And that's why South Asian youngsters are taking to rap, because the genre gives voice to the oppressed and the silent. It allows for self-representation. Sammy's career took off in California, which has the largest number of Indians in the U.S. California being a home to so many of us South Asians here, that definitely lend itself to an advantage. There was a sense of California providing a little bit more of a, whether it was a socio-economic, but also a political environment for four Indian kids to go call themselves a group and go do shows and, and not be looked at too strangely. Although we were looked at strangely, but not too strangely. Whereas in some other states, maybe around the country, that may not have been an easy thing to accomplish from a cultural perspective, from a racism perspective. We were four Indian kids rapping, and that in itself was quite a visual. And I don't think a lot of people were open to seeing that unless they were in places there where there was already some sort of cultural kind of explanation or context for somebody to say, you know what, I'll, I'll check out these four Indian kids rapping and see what they have to say. Karmacy helped pave the way for South Asians to use rap to claim their space, to craft and reshape their identity in America. Sami and his group often sampled a bhangra or doll beat and music from the subcontinent. Listen to their beats here in this song called Blood Brothers. Our most popular song was a song called Blood Brothers, and it spoke of the immigrant struggle in three verses that were articulating everything from what drives a family member to leave India, to migrate, to everything from assimilation and the struggle of assimilation, to subsequently perspective in the entire process, maybe a generational perspective of what that move meant to them. Here in the United States at the time, when a lot of the immigration hot topic stuff was popping up, especially in the early 2000s here, that it was really looked at as a song that really spoke of the South Asian struggle and the South Asian story. And I think it helped a lot of people understand not only why their ancestors made the move here, but also helped them understand that the assimilation process of it was not easy. From California, the music spread across the world, from Toronto, across London, to the streets of Mumbai and Karachi. Today, Desi rap is everywhere. It's been interesting to see the different reflections of hip hop culture, right? Sidhu Musewala from Toronto uses Punjabi music. He's from this really deep, rooted Punjabi community in the suburbs of Toronto. And then you have like Divine in Mumbai, who's got his whole following of coming up from the gully rap scene. As far as how we've seen, you know, the adoption of community and culture into the sound, we have really found that you're going to see different takes on it. In London, you heard this different sound that was built out of this grime sound that was coming out. In Toronto, you heard what you did. A little bit of Punjabi Bhangra scene, because that's what's there. I think you're going to continue to see these hubs of people that were immigrants that moved into these spaces, adopted the communities and got to learn and are directly reflecting to you who they've become in their music. 
London has its thing on it. It's different than what we hear in LA. Same with Toronto, same with Vancouver, same with Mumbai, and of course what you're hearing out of Punjab or some of these other places, and dare I say even into the Far East and stuff, you're hearing the reflections of this stuff coming together of what they adopted, what they took on, what aspects of the languages that we brought on board. This is interesting. I think that the ethnomusicology of hip-hop and South Asian hip-hop and specifically how Indians have moved to these different hubs as they've adjusted to those communities and then what they decide to put on tape is really, really cool to watch and it's cool to see the evolution of it. it really is sammy says that these days many hip-hop artists are going to south asia and returning with unique sounds that are really pushing the boundaries of desi hip-hop you're seeing this really cool thing happening in our south asian hip-hop space and that is what i consider the return path you're seeing a lot of the artists now that are coming back from India that have really embraced the hip hop culture, whether they're rapping in English or even in Indian languages, whether Hindi or whatever, Punjabi or whatever. But they're really kind of going back and embracing the art form and taking that to another level. <laughs> Different money, ha, shock, shock, shopping, ma, is to do a light to rock, bazaar, ya, road, go, shen, street, rap, rap, money, body, language. So, this is Adnan again. We're back on the subcontinent with him in Karachi. In 2012, he was hanging out at a shop in Karachi's Sadar Bazaar. And you know, it had this dinky small TV like these shops do. And it was playing an interview with a rapper who looked just like him. It was Bohemia, a Pakistani-American rapper and a friend of Sami's. And that's when Adnan caught the bug. He's been rapping ever since. I saw Bohemia's interview a long time ago. Bohemia is a Pakistani artist based in America. He is the artist who brought rap to Pakistan and India. In his interview, he was talking about how, when he first started making music, he had a lot of problems. He had no food and he chewed on gum for entire days. He started rapping then and made it to America and represented us, our community in our language. When I heard him talking, I knew this was it. He showed that rap was a thing in South Asia. We were also rapping. Adnan is still very much an emerging artist. He releases under his own Urdu rap label. He drops his songs on YouTube and has a significant social media presence. Truly an artist of our times. I give time to everything. I rap because if I didn't, I don't know where I would be. If I didn't make music, I don't know where I would be. God help me. I could have gone into drugs. It's my passion for rapping that has brought me thus far. Adnan, can you take us out by rapping a little? Khusha Madid, ha shere Karachi, Nusrat e Kawali, W Gyara ki sawari, log milenge karobari, rickshaw bane Ferrari, azad rakhte soch, uthate zimedari, azadi me chale, har taraf amdo raf, bure nazar se bachaye, mere shehar ko rab kadam piche na hatenge, wo pas tha ye ab karwan ban kar hum hain gamzad, street force चमक रहे सड़ गामजद मेरा शहर ऊंचाइयों की तरफ रंग और नस्ल में न रखते फर्क बहुत कौमे आबाद सब बराबर है मजहब लोग आबाद सोचते आजाद करते फरियाद दिन हो या रात रहते बहुत कास्ट मगर दिल है साफ कराची मेरा शहर मुल्क है मेरा पाक You are listening to Iman Iftikhar, Alexis Tanger, Adnan Balok, and Sami Chand on Chatroom 14. Adnan's translation was voiced by Walid Iftikhar. The sound in this episode is handled by Sasha Samina. For more information and other episodes, visit scrollsandleaves.com. Follow us on Twitter at scrollsleaves or on Instagram at scrollsandleaves or like us on Facebook. We'll be back in a couple of weeks with another chat room. This time we'll tell you about two and throat singing. Stay tuned. Thank you.